So good afternoon, everyone. I am Joe Flick with the Montana State Library, and I'm here with my friend Kara Orban, who is going to walk us through a little bit about her job. This Getting to Know You series is uh, really just an opportunity for us at the State Library to kind of provide an orientation, especially for new staff who might not know what it is the State Library here in Montana does. All state libraries are a little different. And ours, I think, is maybe a little more different than most. So we just like to kind of give you an opportunity to learn what we do and to also to get to know all of our staff so you can see how friendly we are and reach out to us anytime you need something and know kind of who to call. So Kara, I'm going to turn things over to you. Thanks, Joe. OK, I am going to share my screen here. So. So this is my record in Aspen. My name is Kara Orban, and I am going to share a little bit with you today about the statewide projects that I manage here at the State Library. And these projects are designed to make services affordable and accessible to as many libraries across Montana as possible. We help libraries to share contracts and collections, and so libraries can reduce the amount of money that they have to put into contracts while also sharing knowledge with their peers and providing access to more services for their communities than they might otherwise be able to do. So again, this is me, this is my contact information. You can find this in Aspen and feel free to reach out to me anytime you have questions or ideas about statewide projects that you'd like to share. And this is my colleague and friend, Bobby DeMontney. She is our technical support librarian for statewide projects. So Bobby just started in October. Uh, she's very familiar with all our statewide projects from her previous time at the State Library. And she and I work together to provide support for statewide projects. So the first couple of projects I want to share with you are about providing e-content, providing an online library where that Montanans can access anytime, anywhere. And this one is called Montana Library to Go. This program is open to the public and tribal libraries of Montana and nearly all the public libraries are participating in this program. And I'm going to put the link in the chat for our website. This is a program that you can access in a web browser, or you can download this app, which is called Libby. This is the Libby symbol on the screen. That's a freely available app. And so Monte Library Go is an online or app service that offers all the participating libraries patrons free access to a collection of around 50,000 audiobooks and eBooks. <clears throat> These are books that are uh, primarily their contemporary bestsellers. Uh, we also have classics, basically anything that you would find in a popular physical collection. We try to have a well-rounded collection. And these books are selected every month by a volunteer selection committee of librarians from participating libraries. So whenever you pay to be part of Montana Library to Go, you're paying for access to this large collection, but you're also, uh, having the value of this expert committee of librarians who are selecting the materials and also the contract management services provided by us at the State Library. So Montana Library to Go is funded in part by the State Library and in part by those participating library fees. And I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing the screen so that I can show you. Montana Library to go in person. I imagine most of you have seen this page before. This is the web browser version. Oh, am I showing my screen? No, not at the moment. <laughs> You're just going to have to imagine what I'm showing you here. Now you can see it. <laughs> just a second till it loads. Yep, now we see it. Okay, so this is the web. And, and Bobby has joined us too, by the way, just to let you know. Great. 
So this is the web browser version of Montana Library to Go. And the book's checked out just like a physical book or an audio CD. This is open 24 hours a day, anytime, anywhere. As long as you have an internet connection, you can check out a book. You can read it in the browser or you can download it. And in the past year, we added a magazine collection, which provides access to hundreds of popular titles. They're here on the home page. And this is also roughly what you'll see in the Libby app. So magazine stand, there's hundreds of titles. These are always available. And so there, there is no limit to the number of copies we can check out at one time. So that you're never going to have to wait for the most view of your magazine. And so we've been piloting this collection for the past year, and we expect to be able to renew it for another year. And in the next year, we expect to be able to add more new material, such as continuing education and test prep resources, as well as some other different formats. So we're excited to be expanding our offerings in Montana Library to Go. So I also wanted to tell you about the school collection, because although school libraries are not eligible to enroll in Montana Library to Go directly, there is this Montana Schools Shared Digital Collection, which is managed outside the State Library. We don't manage it, but they are one of our partners. And students at participating schools connect to this collection either through this, this website, which is pretty similar to the Montana Library to Go website, or they can download this app, which is called Sora. And it's a very kid-friendly app, freely available to students. And the school app has a connection to age-appropriate titles in Montana Library to Go through a program called Public Library Connect. So a student can browse holdings in the school collection and also find Montana Library to Go titles. And they can't, you can't really tell which one comes from where, but uh, it filters out, it filters in, I guess I would say, the titles that are um, relevant from Montana Library to Go. So, uh, do you have any questions about our ebooks collections, Montana Library to Go, or the school library collection? Well, I just want to say that the magazines are a great new addition. I know they're just being piloted, but at least a couple of years. And in the Libby app on my iPad mini, they look terrific. They're very easy to navigate and the images are pretty and clear. And I really like the mag the e-magazines. I was going to ask about the kids collection, though. I didn't with a, if a student from a school find something in the Montana Library to Go collection, do they have to have a separate library card to check that out? Or how does that work? No. So if your public library belongs to Montana Library to Go, then obviously you can use your public library card and check out whatever you want, regardless of whether you're a student or not. If you're a student at a participating school, and this is actually my son's account, I'm logged in as him. <laughs> so um, then you're using your school's authentication information. So whatever your school, um, however your school logs into OverDrive. So you're not using your public library account. Uh, and so checkout comes from Montana Library to Go. It's being counted towards the school that's participating. So it's just, we had to enable that access and give schools permission to borrow from our collection. Um, and so the, the checkout goes towards the school and not the public library, if, that's, if that makes sense. Yes, it does, thanks. I just wondered whether they had to, you know, apply for a separate library card or, but they don't. What nope. does it? What does it look like for the school to, what do they have to do in order to be, to participate? Is there a fee or how does that work? 
Yes, there is a fee depending on the size of the school, and that is actually determined by OverDrive. So the schools that sign up with OverDrive have a direct relationship with them rather than going through the state library and having a cost formula and things like that. They, they pay, uh, the minimum is $250, and that's going to cover most of our schools in Montana, which are relatively small. Mm -hmm. I'm There's just a, curious. Oh, sorry. Don't go ahead, Nikki. I was just curious whether it'd be easier for us to encourage the school to do their own or, or, you know, we've done, you know, with COVID trying to help the kids since they're not in the classroom all the time, still to have access to books, you know, would it be easier for the school to, to try to do something or have us trying to get the kids all public library cards? So that was my main question. Thanks. The school collections are there. There are some. They're organized in a way, and also they're curated in a way that is more geared towards kids, classroom, right? Class, yeah, yeah, classroom kids and, and classroom kids. Classroom yeah. Learning, um, and so they may find more of interest in in Sora than than in Montana Library to go. Although we have a pretty good sized collection in Montana Library to go as well as. So there was a question in the chat box, and I just want to give you a chance to kind of talk a little bit about it. What's the difference between OverDrive and Libby? OverDrive and Libby. Libby is the app that is, it's the preferred app for OverDrive. Now there used to be, and there still is, I guess, there's still an app called OverDrive, but I think that they are phasing that one out. Libby is a little more sophisticated and they're continuing to update it with new features so that they can, I think, phase out OverDrive. But OverDrive is the name of the company that, yeah, that, that makes we it. purchase and everything. If you look at the URL up there, it does say montana.overdrive.com. But Libby is their, is their app, not named for the town of Libby. But um, yeah, it's as, as an app, it works really well with smartphones and tablets, especially. I think. So he has both apps. Yeah, so the question actually was, was Overdrive and Libby the same exact thing? They're the same, they're sort of the same thing, but not the exact thing. <laughs> so Austin says that the Overdrive app will be fake. Yeah, I see that. Phased out in early 2022, so coming soon. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Yeah, that does mean, of course, that you you are doing an oh, intro to Libby um, training pretty soon. I saw that in the on the calendar. That's a training that OverDrive is providing, and okay. Bobby put it on the calendar. Good. So yes, they 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 do a number of trainings pretty frequently. Yeah, it is true that I think um, you may have some patrons who have been using. Overdrive as their to access the Montana Library to go and haven't yet converted to Libby, and they probably might be showing up on your doorstep or calling you in a couple months when um, access to the Overdrive app is phased out. And some older apps are, or not apps, some older devices are not going to be compatible with Libby, so that that may be a challenge for some patrons. Austin is saying in the chat, um, I've been trying to tell everyone new to, to using it to just use Libby. And Tiffany says, I only use Libby now anyways. <laughs> it's true. But your patrons might, um, especially if they have an older device, might still be using, or if they've been customarily accessing it on a computer instead of a tablet or phone. But is Libby's been around for quite a while. I mean, three years, I think. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Sure. Um, if overdrive is being phased out completely, does anyone know, is anyone using it to the point that they know if there's a message that lets people know that it's being phased out soon? So anyone who's currently using it can start switching to Libby? I haven't heard about that. It seems like the kind of thing that if they are phasing it out completely that they would do that. But if it's just being phased out for us or is it system-wide? I think it's system wide, but I don't yeah, know. I think it's system -wide. well. I I actually have the app on my tablet. I'll I'll go. I'll check on that. 
questions. That's that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, Nikki says we have had trouble using it on Amazon devices. You mean Libby, mm -hmm. such as Fire tablets? Hmm. Libby, she does say Libby, yeah. Well, you might want to check out this training coming up that that Bobby posted to. Um, to the events calendar in Aspen. Let's see if I can find the link to it posted in the chat. All right, if you have more questions, uh, feel free to put them in chat or speak up. I'm going to move on from e-resources to physical resources. So next couple of services, wanted to talk about are centered on sharing physical materials between libraries. And so you should be seeing the Courier Alliance map, all its little symbols. Uh, the State Library supports a contract for a courier service, which is currently serving around 55 libraries through 19 drop sites. And this service allows libraries to save money on postage because you can simply put the materials in a crate to be shipped to other libraries. They put them on a truck and take them to the next library. So instead of putting a book into an envelope and paying for postage, paying media mail, a library can just fill up a crate with maybe up to 20, 25 items for around $5 a crate. So it's much more affordable to participate in interlibrary loan sharing at a higher volume using the courier. And as you can see from the map, our range is somewhat limited. We're missing a large area of the state, but we are looking for ways to expand the career network. And we have some possibilities that we'll be exploring in the next year. So if you're interested in bringing delivery service to your community, please be in touch. And Joe just posted the link for the getting started with Libby training hosted by Overdrive in the chat. And then finally, uh, speaking of interlibrary loan, OCLC Group Services is another contract that we support. And this contract provides access to unlimited cataloging and interlibrary loan services. And we try to make this affordable for all Montana libraries. So the cataloging services help you to organize and manage your collection to make it discoverable to anyone in the world, really, through WorldCat, which is a, bibliob a bibliographic database. And the Interlibrary Loan Service allows you to search that database and borrow books from libraries from all over. And so when you enroll in Montana Group Services, you have access to Cat Express, Connection, which are a couple of different cataloging tools, and also WorldShare Interlibrary Loan. And this is a, a contract that we also support using state and federal funding, as well as participating library fees. And there was a question about the Courier, Courier Alliance. Yes, the Courier is different from the shared catalog. They are kind of companion projects. So if you are in the shared catalog, and especially if you're in a sharing group, then it is really convenient to be on the courier because then all the things you're sharing with other libraries, you can just put them in a crate and send them along. Uh, you don't have to be in the shared catalog to be in the courier though. We do have some members that are not in the shared catalog. So I wanted to finish up by telling you about our knowledge base and uh, we'll put the URL in the chat. This is a good place to go first if you have questions about our programs and Bobby who is here in the room with us has been working on updating some of our knowledge base articles, especially for Montana Library to go. And so you can Search the KB 
And if you don't find the answer to your question, uh, sending in a ticket using the submit a, a ticket button here at the bottom is going to be more efficient than email because there are now two of us monitoring the statewide projects tickets. And so your question will be answered faster by either Bobby or myself. And you're also welcome to email me, but if I'm out of the office, it might take a little bit longer than if you send in a ticket. Can you open up the knowledge base? Um, or I can, uh, can you uh, go to that in your, go to your yeah. screen possibly? The easiest way to get to this, or one of the ways to get this is to, um, you can go to the help section of Aspen. So aspen.mt.gov and the question mark there will take you into um, Zoho, which is the application that we use for our ticket system and for the knowledge base. And as you can see, there's all five little sections of different areas of concern that you can kind of drill down into. I know that Kylie has created a lot of um, knowledge base articles for the Montana Shared Catalog, the things that librarians need to know. And there's quite a few on Aspen and how to claim your CE credits and it's a good place to go looking. Yep, so any questions, feel free to open a ticket or get in touch with us through email. I guess you could call us on the phone, uh, <laughs> whatever you prefer. And so that's all I had. Do you have any questions for, for me or Bobby? Nice comment from Austin that the ticket system is fantastic. Yeah, it does work out really well. It's also, I think, worth noting that it's very helpful data for us when pro similar problems come into the ticket system. It helps us um, figure out which is a, a system-wide problem and which is a individual problem. So hopefully you're getting your answers in, uh, quicker that way too. So if we don't have any other comments or questions, we're going to stop our recording. So thanks, Kara. I should have thanked you in the, on the recording. Sorry. And let's see. Was, it, was there any other questions I forgot? Let's see. There's one that came in. I think you saw it, though. You did about the Courier Alliance being different from the MSC. So Kara is your person to go to anytime you have a, a question or a suggestion for uh, some kind of shared product or resource. You don't want to share any like things you're thinking about, Kara? <laughs> you're not being recorded now, so. Things I'm thinking about right now? <laughs> things you're thinking about for shared products or resources <laughs> in the future. Wow. Probably not. Oh. This is Melody, probably not the most exciting thing, but since the partners meeting this morning, I've been looking at interesting crate options for sharing, but that's, I know I'm probably the only one on the call who's excited about crate options. Oh, crates. I'm very excited yeah. about crate options. M Mitch said it's so very Mitch, exciting. Mitch is also excited about crate. I think it really is a, a specific It's hard to know audience. when Mitch is really excited or he's just being snarky and saying he's excited. <laughs> Sarcasm, okay. Yay for crates. Well, we have uh, new things. Uh, yes, we have a lot of one time only monies that we are spending on electronic resources. And so we're going to have a long list of things that will be rolling out to libraries early in the new year. Uh, pending commission approval of our budget. This is this is money from the American Rescue Plan Act. And so there will be new content in Montana Library to Go. There will be some online re resources like news, uh, the Montana newspapers. I think we're going to be able to provide those to all libraries for a year. Uh, there's going to be a long list of things that I'll be sharing in the next so so that's and that's, that's a pitch really for the, come come to the commission meeting and get all the get 
Yeah, get all the info. Well, actually, you can just read through the commission materials if you're interested to know just what's going on. Uh, Tiffany says she always loves new content, even more exciting than crates, huh, Tiffany? <laughs> oh, Melody, you're never going to live that one down. Um, nope, that's, a you know, it's one of those things. Um, we, we will have some one time only funding that hopefully will translate into, you know, kind of new things for folks. So one of the statewide projects that you don't actually coordinate directly is the hotspot lending program. Um, but that was, that's also another, those kinds of pilot projects you, you do kind of have a hand in. Um, although we were able to push that off to a couple of other staff people to actually manage it. Um, it's a big deal. That's going to be, people were asking about that. What's that, Tracy, do you remember? Is it extended through September or December of 2022? December. December. December so. 31st, 2022. Great. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, I've got everybody's attendance today. I'll get you um, listed and get your credit for you in Aspen, half a credit for today's session, and I'll get the video uploaded. Thanks very much, Kara and Bobby. Thanks, everyone. Oh, Thank here's you. a comment from Austin. Do you think there will be a possibility to extend the hot, path, hot spot past December 22? Tracy, you want to handle that? Yeah, um, Jenny is working closely with the legislature and the legislative members that serve on the different ARPA committees, American Rescue Plan Act, and um, she has a possible lead um, that might we might be able to get some funding, and that funding would go through 2024. However, nothing yet. So Jenny is hard at work at it, but we don't have any funding right at the moment. And I guess I would say, if you see something from Jenny on Wire that says, please contact these members of these committees, just follow up. Because <laughs> it's amazing what a difference um, librarians and board members make when they contact their legislature. But at this point, um, there's no need for that. She's just kind of quietly working away with the governor's office and the committee. I do know that the uh, um, TV ads are going to be back on the air soon. Um, so they were just tidying up the contract for those. Had to, they found a independent funder for that. So um, I know that those have been really popular at getting people to know that your library has these, even if they don't use them. A lot of people still support the idea of having them available for use in the community. So be on the lookout for those. And Austin says, oh, if I see an email like that, I'll be sure to respond. Yeah, it's, it's a new service. And as I think it's pretty cl clearly um, still in the pilot phase, um, but the we do have a lot of data to show how they're, you know, how they're being used and eventually we'll probably be wanting more stories. Your stories have really been helpful to keep the funding active so far, so. Who knows? So thanks, everybody. Appreciate your coming by on a Monday after Thanksgiving and making some time for us. And we'll be doing this again in a couple weeks. Let me think. I I think it's a I think Aaron's up next. Oh, GIS coming up in a couple weeks. I'm waiting for Aspen to calendar to load here for December. And um, and then these actually, these getting to know you sessions actually continue through to March. So actually, I don't see it for the, another one for, oh, I may not have posted them yet. That's right. Oh, that's one more thing I need to put on my to-do list before I retire um, is to get all the rest of these posted. So yeah, next one is coming up soon and the whole um, schedule. Uh, so December 13th, 
GIS, our GIS coordinator will be on, and then we'll take a break for the holidays and be back Jennifer on Jennifer, January 10th with Jennifer Burnell. And then Trace is gonna do something on uh, consulting and public library standards. So we will be moving right through. Jenny is, um, brings up the whole, the ends the series on March 7th. So almost every other week, Okay, I'm going to spend the rest of my day getting them all posted for you. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Have a good day. Oh, where do you file a grievance about the so-called retirement? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Too late for that, I'm afraid. The, the job just posted. Why don't you apply, Mitch? You'd be a great um, CE coordinator. Anyway, I um, love you guys so much, but I have a few other things I want to do, so we'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's very sweet, though. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Kara.